Hello, and welcome to my new photography channel, and my first ever video log. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the content that I have to offer. I'm a keen amateur photographer. It's a hobby that I am passionate about. I mostly enjoy landscape photography, as I love walking and exploring the great outdoors. However, I am keen to dabble and experiment in all photography genres, as I enjoy finding and capturing interesting compositions from all walks of life. I also find the challenge of experimentation important in helping me to develop as a photographer and improve my ability to be more creative, an aspect that I often struggle with. I'm hoping that this channel will help me to continue pushing my boundaries by trying out different things and in learning new skills. Along the way, I hope that my content will give you ideas to try out and help inspire your own photography. Talking of learning new skills, a few weeks back, I was trying to think of a subject and composition that would have a reasonable chance at winning a local club competition, the theme being macro and close up. Due to the high caliber of photographers at the club, I knew that I would have to be creative and think outside of the box to be in with a chance. I decided that whatever I was going to enter, it was going to be something that would utilize my speed light that I purchased last year that had pretty much been resigned to the cupboard and only used sparingly a handful of times and then in automatic TTL mode ever since. Research led me to the early conclusion that to get the best and most creative results, the flash needed to be used off the camera and in manual mode. I proceeded to purchase a wireless transmitter, which is compatible with the flash, which will allow me to use the flash away from the camera. Then followed an excellent tutorial by the YouTuber Rob Trek to learn how to use the transmitter with the speed light. That then allowed me to experiment with off-camera flash to try and come up with something special for the competition. Next, I needed a subject. I looked around the house and in the garden and eventually decided that the humble tulip would be my first willing volunteer, something of which I had an abundance of in the garden at this time of year. The tulip I chose was not yet open and as a result, the way the petals were shaped instantly invoked a memory from the 1986 film Little Shop of Horrors, which starred Rick Moranis and Audrey the Venus Flytrap. So from that, I knew what mood and atmosphere and style I wanted to try and achieve in my photo. That tulip, however, a few weeks on, now looks a little worse for wear. So for the purpose of this video, I selected a new volunteer, best of a bad bunch really, to help demonstrate the processes that I used. So, in terms of equipment, when I did this before, I only used one tripod for the camera and handheld the flash. This was useful as I could quickly make changes to where I wanted to aim the flash based on what the previous image looked like and how I wanted to change how the light interacted with the subject. However, for this video, I will be using two tripods to allow me to have a free hand to film the setup. I then position my Olympus camera on one tripod with a 50mm lens macro attached and then the wireless transmitter in the hot shoe and the other speed lights on the other tripod. And then finally I'll be using this which is a flash modifier called a flash bender so you can use this in conjunction with the flash to diffuse the light onto your subject and as I did in this video I actually wrapped it round entirely so that I could actually target the light where I wanted it to fall. So, for the setup, I wanted a black background, which I partially achieved in the capture, using black fabric behind the subject, and then finalized this in post-processing. In terms of camera settings, I used a low ISO to reduce noise, and utilized a narrow aperture to achieve as much depth of field as I could muster. I didn't want to focus stack, as it would not have created the moody, ethereal look that I wanted to achieve. Then, depending on how much light was falling on my subject, I adjusted the flash power manually and moved the flash around to different positions to see what kind of results it would yield. It was a case of trial and error until I was confident that I had captured the shots I wanted and was happy with.
So from the initial shoot, before I shot this video, I had three images that I was really happy with. I selected one that I was going to take further in post to elevate it to something really special for the competition. And two other images that would receive more of a light touch in post-processing before I posted them to my Instagram Flickr accounts. I added in a rainy window effect to try and make the final competition image titled Feed Me Seymour like it was in a shop window. It didn't win, but did receive a highly commended from the judge, so I was pretty chuffed with this. The second image, titled Boo, was posted to my Flickr account, and it has been my most popular image posted to that platform to date. And it currently has been favorited around 61 times and has had over 3,000 views. My highest image before that had only received about 800 views and a handful of favorites. So I was quite taken aback with the popularity of this composition. However, I posted this third image titled Emerging from Darkness from the same shoe and it didn't seem to gain as much popularity. So who knows really? So now I processed my latest image taken in the same way during this video to show you how I processed the initial images and how I also achieved the rainy window effect for the competition image. So I first need to use DxO's Photolab 3 to convert the raw files from my camera into TIFF. This is so I can then edit them in Lightroom and Photoshop etc. I currently do this because I found out last year that Lightroom 5 is getting a bit long in the tooth now and it doesn't seem to render raw files from my camera as well as probably more modern software um, can manage. And I was finding that a lot of my images were very noisy. So I did some research, and did some trials and some software and from all of that, DxO's Photolab 3 seemed to work the best for me. Once I finished in Photolab, I can then convert the file into a TIFF and take it back into Lightroom to continue editing the file. Photolab also has some great tools which I apply before converting it to a TIFF, such as Clearview Plus, an advanced form of dehaze, and also its noise reduction tools are much better than my current version of Lightroom. So I do all these minor adjustments, export it to TIFF and then take it back into Lightroom. So now we're back in Lightroom, I wanted to make the background as dark as I could. I used the clone brush and the visual spots tool to highlight anything really obvious that I wanted to remove. I then used an adjustment brush to highlight and mask all of the background as much as I could and then use the adjustment sliders to pull the exposure to the far left and then also some other sliders to ensure I really had a really dark black background. I could have done this just as well in Photoshop, but for the purposes of this video, this technique was good enough for me. With that done, I restore the exposure of the image back to normal. I then apply some cropping to get the framing how I want it. And then I proceed to go down each of Lightroom's sliders and tweak them until I achieve the look that I am looking for. Next, I take the photo into Color FX Pro 4. It's one of the old Nick collection filters. I just find that this tool is absolutely amazing and it really makes the colors come alive. It's still the free version as I've seen no reason why to update as of yet. So with that saved now back into Lightroom, that's the image pretty much finished off. The last thing I'll do for this image, which is the same I did for the competition image, was to add a rainy window effect on top of the composition. Simply, it involved adding a Gaussian blur to the image after I duplicated the layer. The guide I used had a much more extreme Gaussian blur, but I still wanted to see most of the image behind the so-called window, so the Gaussian blur I applied was not as severe. Then you added a few adjustment layers to alter the exposure, brightness and contrast. For copying over an image of the raindrops, also available from the guide I used, on top of your composition. Then use the free transform tool in Photoshop 
to stretch it over the image. Another adjustment layer was then added to change the exposure to suit your preference. You could then also change the opacity of the raindrops to again get the effect that you wanted to achieve. I then compared the look with the initial image I produced and I was content that they were similar. Finally, as per the guide, I added a cooling effect filter into Photoshop to alter the temperature of the image. Here are the final edited images from today's video. I hope you like them. Thanks for watching, bye for now.